Welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm so glad you're able to join us today. You know, we have been doing this show since 2011, and our goal hasn't changed. It's all about trying to shift our dementia care around the world from crisis to comfort. So subscribe today and learn new techniques and tips and resources that can help you live graciously alongside dementia. I'm Lori LeBay, the host of Alzheimer's Speaks, and my own mother lived with dementia for 30 years. So I get the guilt, the isolation, the frustration, the exhaustion that can come when caring for another. But I've also been able to find that path of joy and purpose and passion. So listen in and let us help you. Now, before I introduce our guest today, I want to give a shout out to uh, a few different organizations. One is the Memory Cafe Directory. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Memory Cafe, it is a support group, and I, I, I use that word loosely. It's really a gathering of like-minded people living with the disease, and it's a way to build a sense of community uh, in a trusted, you know, friendly manner. And uh, when, when this disease hits, so many family and friends pull away. It's just nice to be able to, to have that core group on your side. And the Memory Cafe directory has over 700 Memory Cafes now in the U.S. And they are also gathering a list abroad. So just go to memorycafedirectory.com for more information. I also want to give a shout out to our Roseville AD group, which is a dementia-friendly group. We have put together an airport travel survey, and it's still open until September 15th. And we would love for you, if you were living with dementia and used air, air travel, or if you've been a travel companion for someone, to fill that survey out. Anybody around the world, we, we welcome you uh, to participate in that. And again, just go to alzheimerspeaks.com. It'll be right on top um, on the home page there. Very easy. It'll probably take you 30 to 40 minutes because it is detailed and we want your stories. And then um, last I'm going to give a shout out is to the Stall Catchers. Uh, Stall Catchers is a game that was devised by researchers where we as individuals and non-scientific people can actually help process real Alzheimer's data. So just check out dollcatchers.com uh, and you will get more information there. I also need to thank our listeners. You see, it's your likes, your clicks, your shares, your loyalty has just overwhelmed us and really made us an international show. And I just want to thank all of you. And, you know, you who are listening, maybe you might be our next guest because everyone's voice is welcome and we would love to hear from you we love building that sense of community and collaboration and comfort. And I truly believe the only way we're going to shift from crisis to comfort is, you know, working on this battle against dementia together. So um, with no further ado, why don't I go ahead and introduce our guest today. We are going to be talking about an upcoming film called Spent. And it's all about the hidden costs of dementia. And Daphne Glover Ferrier is an award winning nonfiction content producer, and she specializes in public health and international development, advocacy, um, education, and documentaries for clients like the World Bank and Partnership for Child Development, International Relief and Development, and um, John Hopkins, um, Bloomberg School of Public Health, and so much more. She is currently the producer of Spent, The Hidden Cost of Dementia, and also is producing another film called Rocket to Venice. 
So welcome, Daphne. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for having us. Well, I'm, I'm excited to, to have both you and Robert here. And let me go ahead and introduce him, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and get started with the show. Um, Robert Ferrier is a two-time Emmy Award-winning director and writer of documentary-style nonfiction content. Uh, he has produced films in every corner of the world, and his work has been seen on networks like Discovery Channel and Animal Planet, uh, Travel Channel, the Smithsonian Network, Showtime, National Ge Geographic, and PBS. His work spans all the genres from history and science and arts and travel and international development and public health. And his latest projects that he's working on are also Rocket to Venice and um, Spent, The Hidden Cost of Dementia. So welcome, uh, Robert. How are you doing today? Right. Thank you so much. You're doing great. So glad to be with you today. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time because I, you know, I think the title of your film alone is really intriguing because, you know, um, spent um, says so much, not just financially, but I think, you know, being physically exhausted, uh, we think of as well. And then, you know, all those hidden costs of dementia. So I want to talk uh, first, um, and I'm going to point this question to Daphne, to tell us a little bit more about your journey with your own mom, Betty, who had vascular dementia. And, and is that why you decided to do the film, Daphne? Yes, absolutely. So my mom, Betty, was just... Um, she was such a cute, cute person. She, she was really the kind of person everybody loved. She never met a stranger. Um, and she was an airline stewardess in the 1950s and then a, really a lifelong learner, including, um, and I'm very, very proud of this, she graduated from Johns Hopkins University when she was 65. So, and she was involved with any, like um, all these different community activities and had a million friends. And so when we started to notice something was sort of amiss, we um, we just were blindsided by that, to be honest. Um, and um, we, it's just, she's just the last person I would have thought would ever have dementia because she was such a you know engaged person in every way. But as you mentioned, my mom did have vascular dementia, and um, her journey was fairly quick. I mean, would she? was living by herself in April of 2013. And by June of 2013, she needed full time memory care. So um, for our family, obviously we were sort of grappling with uh, the heartache of seeing this person that we just love so much go through um, this huge change. And we were trying to figure out how to care for her. And we just had no idea whatsoever what we were doing. And then as we started to investigate um, her getting help for her, we were just flabbergasted by the, um, by the cost associated with the disease. And whether that's in-home care or, um, you know, for people who are fortunate enough to be able to do that, or, or if you're putting someone, placing someone in memory care, it, we were just, and then we realized it's not covered by Medicare. We were just dumbfounded. And so while we were going through um, all of our own, uh, you know, the other costs, the, the, just the emotional toll that this disease takes on you when you see this person you love so much going through something like this, um, we were also just scrambling around and trying to figure out how on earth we, we were going to make this work. Um, and initially we didn't actually think about making a film about it because we were living it. So all of the costs that people associated with this disease, the, the loneliness and the financial, um, the isol you know, the isolation, the stigma that's attached to it, all of those, those experiences and, and issues are all things our family has personally dealt with. But after some time, once we sort of got my mom squared away um, and we found a, just an incredible place for her to live near, near where, where Bob and I live and they gave her just such incredible care 
and I luckily have siblings that could help. So we all sort of pooled our, our finances to get her the best care we could get for her. Um, then we started to think, you know, my goodness, how are other families dealing with this? And um, once we started to research what was really out there on the topic, um, you know, we realized this is something people really aren't talking about it about. And as filmmakers who've done a lot of work in the in the realm of public health filmmaking, we kind of know just how how much of an impact a film can have. Um, and it can give people a way to start a dialogue. Um, so that is how we came to came up with the idea to to not only make a film but but make a film that's specifically about this topic. Wonderful, thank you, um, Bob. Anything that you want to add about um, you know being a, a son-in-law with your with your mother-in-law on this journey and trying to support your your wife and her and and still have your own life? How did how did you deal with it all? Well, you know, obviously we're we're in this together. Um, you know, we're married and we're partners, and um, and certainly you know what happens to Daphne and her family happens to me as well. So. You know, it's one of these things that even though, you know, no one's fully prepared for these kinds of things to happen to your family, you have to just basically take stock of what's going on, um, look at, at your options that are available to you, um, and and take the best course of action. I mean, for us, like Daphne mentioned, we're fortunate that she had siblings, and together they were able to pull their resources to supplement um, their mom's limited income and that allowed them to uh, you know shoulder those costs um, for assisted living because as you know um, that's one of the biggest costs uh, associated with dementia is the care and you know and and so we quickly realized that 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 there, there was really no other resources available to us we had just enough money so we didn't get any uh, help. Um, but yet we really, I mean, but, you know, Betty did not have enough money on her own to take care of, of those costs. So I and mean, that's what that's what we're finding from more and more families is that, um, you know, it's sort of like this, you know, we like to say it's sort of like a middle class crisis, if you will, because if you are rich, if you have all the resources in the world, this, this, the finances aren't something that you worry about. I mean, you, you pay the costs and you move on. If you're, if you're poor, if you have no resources, then there is uh, resources available to you. Um, but if you're in that middle class, if you have just enough uh, that you, you, you don't get resources, you have to then basically spend down your money. And so we were, we were finding that this disease, not only are people, you know, scrambling and grappling with their loved ones, you know, changing on them on you know it's just like disease that sort of like you know takes their their loved one out from under them um but then they have to figure out ways to pay for the cost and and it's a it can be a super challenging for a lot of people and as it was for us but fortunately we had that support group okay well and it's interesting how you kind of talk about the that donut hole when you fall in the middle and there's just there's nothing you know, too much for this, not enough for that, and yeah. then you're left to fend for yourself. Um, Bob, I wanted to ask you, you know, what made you decide? Was there was there a moment that just it either hit you or Daphne that said, we, we need to make this film. We need to make a film about this journey. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think Daphne touched on it a little bit. I think that we've, we've known about the power of film to start a dialogue. Uh, to affect change, uh, to get people involved and um, engaged, and we thought, you know, we aren't, we can't be the only ones that are sort of like that. This is happening to. I mean, that that, that we're that's a, that that affected by this in the, in the way we were, and so we thought, you know, this is a, this is a subject that we that we feel that we need to talk about, and uh, as a society. We need to sort of discuss this uh, at large. You know, what can, what are we what are we doing as a society? Why is it such a challenge for the middle class? Um, and so we thought, 
well, you know, we're filmmakers and that's the kind of thing, that's, that's the medium that we work in. And we thought, let's make a film, you know, because if we can, if we can get a film to resonate with enough people, uh, they can either see themselves in the, in the families that we profile or, uh, or, or, you know, get organizations sort of like geared, ramped up and geared up or have enough people to sort of put pressure on, you know, politicians and to sort of get affect change and policy, then, then, you know, then we've done our job. Uh, and I think in the end, that's really what we want to do. We, this, we want this film to start a dialogue, to get people thinking and talking. And I can't agree with you more. I think film is a beautiful medium that kind of takes people by surprise um, when you t tell a story. You know, they they come in not uh, not prepared for you know a lecture or or anything that's really going to kind of focus in, and yet you can pull at those heartstrings and really get people to feel the need for change to happen, and and why it's so critical. Um, you know, I've been working with a film called um, His Neighbor Phil, which just changed their name to A Timeless Love and taking that around the country. And I, I can't tell you how powerful that is. And people are just shocked. You know, they come in and they feel all these emotions and then they share and, that you know, they're hooked up with, uh, with resources, which is um, so beautiful and so calming, and they see that they're not alone. And, and a film can take away some of that, that isolation, or no one understands. Even my family doesn't get it, my friends. But, you know, watching a film and, you know, realizing these are, these are real families going through Ooh. this stuff is, is very, very important. Now, Daphne, yeah. how, did you, um, how did you guys come up with the title? Because, again, I said I love the title. I think Spent says it in so many different ways. And I think that it does take people by surprise, all of the, the hidden factors uh, kind of wrapped in dementia. Well, we actually, we, we bantered about and we tried on different titles for size. And then one day, Bob just looked at me and he said, Spent. And I was like, that is it, because that is how I felt, and that's how we were. And I was like, I feel like that will resonate with anybody who's been on this journey, and both the person experiencing the disease and their surrounding family and friends. It's just you, you feel spent, and, and you've spent all your money <laughs> as well. And so I, when Bob brought it up, I was like, that's it, done. We don't even have to look any further, because mm -hmm. they're just – felt it so resonated with me and I and I feel from talking to other people um, that it really has resonated with them as well yeah it seems like the title uh, I like that you said we did we, we looked at a couple other titles and just thinking of some things and um, and you know when we when we came up with the with that title spent um, and like you said Laura it just sort of encapsulates what people are feeling going through experiencing uh, and just that one word, you know, it, it just su kind of sums up this, what people, the journey sometimes. I mean, you know, we don't want it to be, we don't want to necessarily make it all about the doom and gloom, obviously. And, but we, we know that that word spent just sort of like means so much. Well, and I think even, you know, even though some people may think that, you know, it's a, a negative, you know, you can't turn it to a positive if you don't identify it first, you know, yeah. and so I think that's one of the beauties of the film is, you know, you are, you're, you're showing how, how people can get spent. It can be money, it can be emotions, it can be, you know, family drama, you know, all of those types of things come into play, maneuvering the medical system and trying to understand, you know, our, our health system and, uh, family and friends, all of those things come into play. So um, I want to talk a, a little bit about and, and give our audience a feel for, you know, who is featured in the film in terms of, are, you know, are you following some families around and do you have um, some, some experts in the field as well? And Bob, if you wouldn't mind taking that, that question and maybe start with the family uh, portion, if you're, 
if you're following families or, you know, how are you exposing this? The inspiration for the film was our own experience. Um, but we, but we, we thought that, you know, uh, our alone experience, you know, wasn't completely uh, emblematic of what families are going through. So we, we, we definitely needed to get a cross section of Americans. And so we're on, we're on the search for, you know, some more families, but the families were, that we were featuring so far that we've been following for the past couple of years. Um, one is uh, a family um, from New Jersey and they, um, his name is Jeff Borgoff and, and his family, the Borgoffs, Jeff and Kim. And so they're, they're, their story is somewhat unique in the fact that Jeff's dad uh, began to have symptoms of Alzheimer's. And so what they did was they, they thought, you know what, struggling, you know, they had three kids in college and what are they going to do? It's like, you know what, why don't we um, renovate the garage? We'll move mom and dad in. And then that'll be the, that, that'll be the answer. You know, they'll, they'll be able to take care of them at home in a renovated garage or a little apartment. Um, and then as that was in the process, they basically finished the, the renovation. They moved the parents in. And then Jeff, at 52 years old, began to get symptoms of early onset Alzheimer's. So now you have a family that is now caring for their, you know, 80 some year old father with Alzheimer's, the, you know, 52 year old uh, has early onset and now, and three kids in college, he has to quit his job. Um, and now the, uh, all the finances fall on Kim, Jeff's wife. And so it became a, a it became a, like, it's a, it's a story that is just, Heart wrenching and can be overwhelming, and it's obviously overwhelming for them. Um, but they have been completely generous with their time and allowing us into their lives and telling, you know, just the warts and all. I mean, just letting it, let, telling us what's going on and how it's affecting them, and 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 they've been super generous, and and we just love them to death for allowing us to, you know, tell their story. And then another family we're featuring. Um, is a, uh, a gentleman who has um, Lewy body uh, dementia. And he has a, you know, he, he was in his mid eighties as well. Maybe got like, I think late seventies, I think when he started getting the symptoms and he had his you know, a, a, a 20 year um, difference in, in marriage. The, his wife, um, Robin was maybe in, in her fifties and so she, he started getting these symptoms of Alzheimer's. And what was really unique about their situation is that, I mean, they, again, another family that allowed us into their home, allowed us to sort of, you know, follow along in their journey. But he was a little farther along uh, with his, with his, with his, with his Alzheimer's, with his uh, dementia. And so, but what's really um, interesting was that Robin filmed with their phone and with her, with her camera, these, these moments when, when her husband Wolfgang was experiencing these changes. And so she was able to capture them. She had the, the, the forethought to capture these moments um, because she was, I mean, it was, she was witnessing all of this stuff, but a lot of people don't think about filming them, but she did because she knew but this was important stuff. I mean, these, these are people that were going through this change in their life. And she wanted to document it even before we came into the picture. So she allowed us to use those um, snippets of his early sort of transition to build a very powerful story for them. Um, so those are our two families right now. And, I, and uh, obviously, we're, we're, we're looking for some more families to follow. But that um, they are just amazing people. And so we're really, really fortunate. Great. And we had talked a little offline that you were looking um, to kind of expand diversity um, so that you are looking, if anyone is listening, you are looking for a family that is maybe Mexican or African-American 
um, to be able to show different cultures and things as well. Um, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, yeah, absolutely, Laura. I think, you know, that's really important because that's certainly a cross-section of America's, uh, Americans. So, um, you know, Hispanics, um, you know, African-Americans, uh, certainly, we're we're hoping that we can follow families, some other families along. Um, but you know, it's difficult. I you know, and I get it. Um, not everyone wants cameras in their home and and detailing some of these intimate moments. But it's those families that allow us to do that that give everyone an, a glimpse of what's going on. So we're certainly you know, if anyone you know would like to reach out to us, they can certainly find us. Uh, at the end of the show, we can, you know, obviously tell them how to reach us. But, um, but yes, we're certainly looking for other other families to feature. With uh, the African American and Me Mexican population tends to have a, a higher rate of of getting dementia. But again, Asians and so forth as well. I mean, this this disease doesn't care who you are, where you came from, how educated you are, if you got money or not. You know, it's it's striking everyone at all a variety of ages, and we're even seeing children now getting diagnosed with, with dementia. So um, again, if you are a, a family that would be willing to share your experience, you know, and think of it, you know, really as, as helping, helping the next family and also leaving a legacy for what you've been through, I think is a, a beautiful, um, a beautiful piece because I, I know when I went through this journey with my own mom, it was 30 years long and, I just felt like there had to be a lesson. There had to be a reason. And I think part of that reason is to get, uh, you know, for me anyways, is to get people to share their stories because we can't change things. We can't change policy. We can't get the support services that are needed if we don't know what the needs are. Okay. And, and this is a real important step because these numbers keep going up. And, um, you know, things are expanding faster than policy change has, uh, is happening. And so we need as much help as we can. And again, being part of a film like this would be a, a brilliant way to help push, push things forward. Now, um, Daphne, what about in the film, you know, you've, you've got the, you know, Bob had told us about families. Are you having some experts um, on the film as well? Yes, we have been so fortunate with um, the experts that we've been able to um, to film, and we have quite a, a cross section of um, of experts. So we have um, George Freidenberg from Us Against Alzheimer's, and um, who who sort of speaks to policy issues, and then and he's very active, you know, for those people who who know him up on the hill and trying to get people in Washington to listen to what families and are going through with this disease. Um, we have um, an economist, um, Julie Sissimopoulos from USC, who really studies the, the, the economics of this disease and how if we don't pay attention, um, you know, this disease could cripple our economy. So that's the more the macroeconomic level. So we're both looking at the family level of the disease, but also on the broader societal picture. Um, we have um, Dr. Helena Chu from USC, who's the head of their Alzheimer's Research Center. So she talks to us a little bit more about the science um, angle of things, pre prevention. Um, and um, we have also Dr. Um, Liddy Manson from, she's from Georgetown University. And she is an expert sort of in business and why businesses need to be paying attention to this. Um, and what are some innovative things that are happening in, in, in the business community that might allow families um, to care for their loved ones at home for a longer period of time? And so those are just some of our experts. We've, we have others. We have a, you know, a person who speaks to just wealth management. And, and um, we have Dr. Beth Kallmeyer from the Alzheimer's Association. And then we also have um, a couple of researchers, um, Dr. Neil Bernard, um, and then, um, sorry, and then Dr. Sharma, who are both people that, that actually look at either prevention or they do studies on um, trials, clinical trials. So we're sort of hitting it from every angle so that there's sort of a little bit of something for everyone um, because we need 
all of those people and, and all those, we, we need business and we need, you know, certainly politicians and, and then researchers. We need everyone to be at the table to really talk about and help solve this, this, this crisis. And I might add, we, we also, we, we, we plan on interviewing um, some, some politicians, some people that are in the forefront of policy. Uh, we, you know, it, it's a, that's a changing landscape right now, as you know, I mean, it's, you're all, we're all, so we're, we're waiting for the, the right time to, um, you know, find just the right, you know, policy folks. But uh, that's something we want to, we want to talk about too. It's like, what is, what is government's role in this? Why, you know, what, what can, what are they doing now? What, what are, what are plans for the future? Um, and so that's, you know, along with our experts, we want to, talk about policy as well so wonderful well you guys are really touching on a, on a wide range and I just I, I want to highlight a couple of things um, George with us against Alzheimer's I mean I just admire that man so much he has he has really changed the landscape on a lot of levels and pulled people together not only in this country but internationally and um, if you're not familiar with Us Against Alzheimer's, you need to go to usagainstalzheimers.org uh, and sign up for their newsletter because it's one of the most um, since succinct and um, valuable newsletters that you'll get daily. And you can, you know, get the short piece or you can dive in and they they cover policy making and research and and real voices living with the disease and stuff. And, and so I'm, I'm so glad that you have him involved. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that you've got an economist talking about, you know, this whole, you know, macro level and how, how this disease is having a huge impact, not just on an individual diagnosis, but this huge ripple effect in terms of what you experienced and the family chipping in and really trying to lift and support. And then, that rolls into our, our communities and our cities and our states and and how that's going to uh, affect the budgets. And then to have the science piece and the prevention piece, I think is, is very powerful. Someone helping with the wealth management, like you said. And then um, I'm not quite sure on the business side um, how deep you're going um, with this, but or if you've thought of um, featuring maybe a city, you know, there's more dementia-friendly communities popping up. I happen to work with one in uh, Roseville, Minnesota, that is just doing a, a fabulous job, and it's a it's grassroots. But the city has actually um, dedicated a page on their website to us so that we can get and distribute information out, not just to residents in Roseville, but surrounding areas also go there looking for where can I find respite, where can I find education, um, you know, all, you know, housing, all different types of pieces there. And they have um, done training with their staff, the police, the fire department, the library system has gotten involved in terms of they actually have a section in their library now that um, people can find resources and they've developed specific packets for early, mid, and late stages, and they're, they've pulled ones together now for frontal, temporal lobe, Lewy body, and now they're making one for children to understand about this disease. And then we have the school district who is also involved with the uh, senior community. And so we just have this really brilliant collaboration with the major entities all involved in supporting it. And um, you know, the city manager and, and all the department heads, I actually, we did videotape and they talked about why they got involved and how it's helped the city and how it hasn't been taxing to their departments um, and, and the benefits that they've seen. And I think that that's a message that needs to get out more because people think, well, you know, I don't need to know, you know, um, I, I, I'm a city or, you know, I sell cars by what I need to know. Well, because there's a lot of people caring for people and they need to know how are they going to easily access getting someone in and out of a car. If it's child or if it's an adult, it's different, you know, and what are those amenities? Or if it's a restaurant, how can they adapt? You know, there's, there's a lot of important features. And I know you can't put everything in a film, but I think um, featuring a, a city 
that's really embraced it, I think would be helpful because I, I think it, it helps leverage um, some of those, those economic things and, you know, how they leverage disseminating information and not repeating, but really pulling together um, the information. And then um, again, also the benefits, you know, to the city because cities are aging and even if they don't have a population that they might think is, is dealing with dementia, they probably have adult children and family members and friends dealing with it. And so this is just such an expansive thing. And I think the focus sometimes gets so nano focused that people kind of blow it off. But it really, um, you know, the, the numbers out there for that we hear all the time with dementia is for every person who's diagnosed, you know, they'll say it affects, you know, six to seven people. Well, hello, how big's your family? Probably bigger than that. And then you mm -hmm. add in friends and neighbors and work environments and, you know, all the people that you meet just living your daily life. It, it, affects, it affects us all. And so I think there just has to be a greater understanding. So I, I like I said, I love, you know, the the wealth of information and the variety that you're, you're pulling from and then to feature, feature the families on top. So, so kudos for you guys. Um, did you have any comments to what I just said? I do. Yeah. I, I, we, we love that idea. I mean, maybe we should, we, you know, offline, we'd love to get more information about that particular city, but you know, that idea, that um, idea of, of engaging the community around this disease, um, is, is, is something new in this country. I mean, there's some other, there's some other countries that are sort of embracing it as well. And we wanted to do it. We wanted to do a deeper dive in an international realm. Uh, but it's, it's really uh, heartwarming to know that some cities are sort of adopting this as a plan to sort of get, um, to have, uh, you know, firefighters and police and, um, you know, restaurant owners, uh, you know, hotel, I mean, all these different kinds of businesses and city, um, you know, services to learn how to interact with people with dementia and, you know, how to, you know, it's, it's such a step forward. Um, and it really will be the answer to how we deal with this because you, as you know, I mean, you know, I mean, there's more and more people being diagnosed. There's, you know, I think right now it's, it's close to 7 million people living with this disease and, and and like you said for every one person there's at least you know seven eight, seven to ten people that are affected by it so it affects millions and millions of americans um and around the world i mean you know obviously a staggering number of people that it affects and so the more we as a society embrace that and realize that this is this is this is normal. This is our new normal, right? This is what's this is what was happening in this in in our world, and rather than sort of turning a blind eye to it, we're we're embracing it and we're learning how to deal with it and how to, um, you know, move forward with it. So I think it's wonderful, and we'd love to talk actually talk to you about talk to you about it offline. That'd be awesome. And I think all those things really help break down the stigma around the disease. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you've met people and you're then you're not afraid of it and you know how to act and, and know that, you know, it, you're just, I think that that, I, I love the idea that everybody's trained and how wonderful for those families and then that community, because, um, because then everyone knows, you know, they can take their loved one to a restaurant. I just read that wonderful piece about um, the restaurant in, in Huntington, um, West Virginia, where they just open, they it sounds similar where they trained all the the staff um, from the dementia friendly um, um, organization there, and and now all these families can go out to dinner in a place where they feel comfortable, where the staff's been trained, and I just think that's it's it's a small thing, but it's easy to implement, and it would make people's lives better right now. And I think you know, the more we can talk about things like that too, that's just you know, a huge, a huge bonus. Yeah. And the, the, uh, purple tables.com is where people can, they have actually have an app where people can see if there's a dementia friendly restaurant, you know, and then they can make an appointment, um, for a purple table. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's not, um, 
it's not blatant and it's something that's good for dementia. It's good for people with post-traumatic stress. It's good for autism, all kinds of different things where they just, they make some subtle changes. And, you know, life is all about adapting and why we have, you know, we have been marketed by fear for so long and fear paralyzes us to change and to adapt. And we just get scared and we think that there's nothing we can do. And there is so much that can be done. And every, every single person in this world has the power to adapt and to change. And I think with that comes this great beauty and grace of really um, living your life more fully and authentically and, you know, gets rid of some of the, the criticisms and the bullying and things that happen and those stigmas mm -hmm. and just says, you know, we, we are much more alike than we are different. So let's start mm -hmm. focusing on that and let's start focusing on empowering people and letting them do whatever it is they can do to the best of their ability because we're all different. We, we all do things different. Um, but when it comes to this disease, we, we tend to, you know, go, no, it has to be done this way. And, and it doesn't. It just really, it doesn't. And there's, there's, so, there's so many great resources out there um, to, to be able to talk about. Um, so, Daphne, I wanted to have you talk a little bit, too, about um, what, what are your goals for, you know, the film? What do you, what, in your dream world, what do you want it to achieve? Well, just, um, you know, it's funny because in the beginning, you know, when you talk about crisis to comfort, that that's your tagline. Um, I think that that is so in line with our mission for the film, too, is we want to present the facts and get the, you know, there's certainly an advocacy aspect to the film it, that we want to show people what's really happening and what the real facts are. But we certainly want it to help people know that there are places they can turn and that there are people ready to help them. So for, for the person going through it or their families, there's, like you mentioned, anything from a memory cafe um, to, you know, some financial services that might be available, um, online chat rooms, online information, call centers. There's all kinds of help out there. And, and we, we want people to know that there is, there is a support system even though we actually need the support system to be larger than what it is. But the more we can all talk about it and be aware of it. So I guess that's our real hope is that we just can start a dialogue and show people um, what it's like for families. And at some point in our lives, we are all going to experience this either ourselves or through a family member or through a close friend. And so we want people to be aware of it and, um, and work to try to influence change. Wonderful. And, and, and yet one of the things that, you know, I love that you're presenting facts, but I also think, you know, from just what I've heard from you is that you also understand that this is a moving target and that nothing can really stay stagnant. It's, it's constantly changing because every person with dementia is, is different. Every care partner is different. Every environment is different. And so every service product and tool I believe has to be fluid in some kind of fashion or open to there isn't going to be a silver bullet that's going to solve everybody's problem. So it's about, you know, getting as much information as possible from a variety of entities to educate ourselves the best possible way. And then I think one of the, the key factors that is really undervalued and not talked about is we need to get people to share their knowledge, what they've learned through the lived experience or through film or through educational things. We can't, we can't afford as a country or as a society at large, as a world, to keep that stuff privileged to ourselves. There are too many people that need this information and we have to, we have to make this a comfortable conversation over a cup of coffee or a cocktail. Um, you know, we, we just have to remove the fear. And like Bob said, this is our new normal. And we need to accept that and deal with that and not be ashamed of it 
or afraid of it. Uh, Bob, as far as um, the the film goes, is there anything else that, that you know Daphne had talked about what you wanted it to achieve that that you want to add into that, or did she pretty much cover that? Sure. No. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, Daphne was was uh, pretty thorough, but I think we also would would like to um, you know obviously this is all funding dependent, but the idea uh, for distribution that we have for the film is a couple of ways. Uh, PBS seems to be the, 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 the logical uh, choice to get the film seen by as many people as possible. I mean, that's our goal, right? We want to have as many eyes on the film, uh, engage as many people as possible. And PBS seems to be the best way to do that. Um, uh, you know, public television, I guess, rather than just PBS, but public television. So with that, though, of course... Um, we as producers need to raise that money uh, because public television is a platform and a distribution platform available to producers, but they don't fund. And so, um, so it's up to us to raise the money, which we are doing, which we're working hard and doing that. Um, and then also we want to, we want to enter into, we want to enter a, a festival cut. Um, we want to do some, you know, show it at festivals uh, and get people engaged in that uh, platform. But then also we want to cut smaller versions of the film and we can, we can do those as um, we can present them as like meeting starters. Um, you know, organizations can sort of, you know, screen them to, to start a, off a discussion. Uh, so those kinds of ways that we want to try and get the film out. And of course, you know, at these larger screenings that we have either festivals and whatnot, um, you know, we would be available as well, depending on location and timing and budget uh, to accompany the screening and then to be part of the discussion afterwards. So there's lots of different ways that we're trying to get the film out there um, to be seen. And, uh, you know, obviously we have to complete it. We have to finish the film first. Um, but we, we have a, we feel really good about, um, you know, the public, you know, wanting this. And so we, we feel like we have a, we have something that will resonate with folks and uh, it's just getting it out there and, and getting it in front of people. Great. You know, one thing um, I'll say, you know, when we did our, uh, you know, we did a red carpet thing for, for ours and it was fun to hear all of the, the actors in it because it, it was not a, a documentary. Um, it, and it was it was just a fun interaction, you know, for the audience to hear. And yet, I understand how difficult it can be to, you know, fly people around for for those types of things for um, for screenings. And so, one thing that I might um, just recommend to you is to maybe do, um, if it's feasible, to do some offshoots. You know, some of those off camera interviews of if I was on a panel and I was on stage what would I be wanting to tell the audience of my experience of being part of this film might be kind of a, a, a nice thing to be able to, to share as well. Because I think those, those conversation starter pieces that you're talking about, those smaller versions, um, one of the things that I love about those, because that's kind of what I do with this other film, it's, it's the power of being able to, have those conversations and, you know, have that piece of meat to begin with and then connect them to resources and to a sense of community. Where I think, you know, sometimes with the, the larger screenings and the festivals, they're nice and they, you know, they get the word out, but they don't, um, and, and this is just my opinion, they don't hone in deep enough to help people. And to me, I think that's one of the keys of films like this is, you know, we need to get it out and, you know, those are great platforms. Don't get me wrong with it, but it's those local conversations that really change, in my opinion, lives. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Laurie. I think one of the things that we really would love to do as well, and this is a public television sort of uh, forum and platform, is... You know, and again, it's all it's all funding because everything seems to be funding funding related. But 
if we raise enough money, we want to offer micro grants to um, affiliate stations across the country. So if like if if that public television station airs our film, then immediately following our film, they can have their own in studio local production where they bring in their own local experts and have a call in where people can that, that local community can then call that station, talk to experts on how they can then access information on a local level. Obviously, okay. we're, we're showing a film that sort of talks about this big picture, you know, aspect of the disease and, and, the, and the cost associated with it. And we're showing some people who are dealing with it. But for folks that are sitting in Peoria, you know, how, how does that relate to them? So if they can have a follow-up program where expert, they could, you know, talk and talk to experts in their in that city, and say, well, you know what? If you call this number, if you go here, then you'll get the answers you need. And I think that's really important uh, to give that, have that mechanism in place, um, so people can then get immediate answers on a local level. And that, um, just to follow up with that too, we've had the opportunity to show a twenty-minute sort of sneak peek at a couple of conferences. Um, I think you spoke with um, Lisa Chirico um, very recently, so I was one of her speakers at, on her Dementia Cruise, and we showed the film, and actually the keynote speaker was um, Jeff Borgoff, who we feature in the film. And it's really a thrill to get to show a 20-minute piece and then to see that it actually is, you know, enabling a discussion. Um, and so what we would love to do for the times when we couldn't be there ourselves because that wasn't, that's not really our idea that we would always be accompanying it. And that's not a larger venue is um, see if we can have a discussion guide um, made a companion piece. Um, and then they can, they can tap into whatever small community is showing it. They can tap into some of their local resources as well. So people, we never want people to leave having watched the film and feeling hopeless. We want them to feel like there is hope and here's where I go to get help. I think that's beautiful. I, in terms of thinking about those um, micro grants, it would be really fairly easy to hook up with certain cities and even tie that into m most all of the, especially larger cities will have at least one conference and many of them will have multiples um, or dementia friendly communities that could take that and really um, tie it in in terms of their timing. So maybe, maybe the film is even shown um, prior to and, and then tied into more resources um, and more educational pieces, you know, further down the line. And, and um, you know, I, like our Roseville group, for example, we do almost monthly programming and stuff. And if we, if we planned and we plan a year out, um, you know, we could take that and go, okay, well, this time we're going to talk, you know, maybe about organizations like um, Us Against Alzheimer's and some different things that are out there and what they're doing. And maybe maybe we're going to have a researcher. Maybe we're going to have an elder law um, attorney and a financial planner talk about kind of that wealth management and kind of break down different things and, and you know, carry, you know, have that kind of almost be the kickoff feature for um, further um, educational pieces. I mean, so it could go, it could be a one-time, you know, thing, or it could actually be something that that leads to much bigger and broader um, purpose tying that in. So I, I just, you know, I love what you're doing. I think it's greatly needed. You know, there's more and more films um, coming up, but again, we're, we're never going to have enough of them because there's so much ground to cover, you know, with all of this. So kudos um, to your, your family for, you know, going through your own personal journey. And then, um, you know, sometimes people go through the journey and they're like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm out of here, <laughs> you know, but you guys have chosen to kind of raise the stakes, you know, realize that there's, there's more to be learned and to be shared and to be able to, to help the next you know, the next people in line with this journey. And so again, thank you so much for all your efforts. Um, Bob, was there anything else that you wanted to add before we wrap up? You, you really have covered it. And I, um, we just thank you so much for 
giving us the platform mm -hmm. uh, to talk about our film. And it's, you know, like you said, it's something that, you know, these films, um, the more the merrier, right? I mean, that we, you know, there's room for as many films as possible. And of course we're, we're, our subject is unique. I think it's in the, the way we're looking at it. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we, we just thank you so much. It's awesome. Good. Daphne, any, any comments from you? Well, I would love first thank you and thank you for all the great work that, that you do in this field. Um, it's amazing, really, how, how many resources you're you're informing people about. But I also wanted to tell people if they want to know more about the film, they can visit us online. We have a website, um, it's spentdementia.com. Um, and we're also on Facebook at Spent Dementia Film, and we're on Instagram, it's um, spent dementia underscore film. And Twitter, I think, is just spent dementia. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, we would really appreciate people following us if you're interested in the topic and engaging with us. Like, let us know if you, you know, we, we love to hear what people have to say. And um, we're obviously looking for corporate sponsors. That's huge for uh, these kinds of public television films is to get um, sponsorships. So we're certainly open to discussing that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, people certainly follow us get updates we you know we, we, we send out a newsletter um, obviously we're updating our Facebook page um, so yeah just and know. then and then you guys um, are working with the um, women in film and video so people if they want to make a donation can do that and that's tax deductible is that correct that is correct thank you for mentioning that but yes yeah, so if people wanted to what, every size donation helps, really. It, it, that's what's made it possible so far for us to keep filming. So we make a little money, and then we just go out and keep filming. Um, and um, if they go to our website, there's a donate button, and it goes through a wonderful organization called Women in, in Film and Video. Um, it's an organization that supports female filmmakers, um, and we're very fortunate to have them as our fiscal sponsor and our sort of mentors on, on this film. They've been wonderful to work with. Wonderful. And then again, if you are, a, you know, a family, um, possibly African American, Mexican, Asian, um, that would be willing to share your story, they are looking to have this film be a little bit more diverse. So, you know, go to the website. Again, that's spentdementia.com. And you can email them or, or, you know, contact them from there. And, um, and discuss that possibility because, again, stories, you know, stories change the world. And film is a, is a beautiful way to be able to, to tell, tell that story. So, again, thank you both for taking the time to share your story with us in, in what you're doing. And we will do everything in our power to, to you know, lift you and um, push you out so that, more people hopefully get involved and, you know, donate and you get your corporate sponsors. So this film can become a reality and, and really a, a powerful tool um, in terms of, of education and engagement and um, getting rid of a lot of those stigmas. So again, thank you. Thank you both so much for, for being with us today. And I want to thank our listeners for joining us. And I hope that you um, sense here that, you know, our focus again is to shift dementia care around the world from crisis to comfort. So please subscribe today and continue to learn new techniques, tips, and tools and resources to live graciously alongside the disease. And, um, and don't forget to push it out to your circle of friends. If it's on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, there are people out there that you don't even know are dealing with this because it's kind of a silent disease. People keep it to themselves. And we, we need to remove that discomfort and allow people to tell their stories and allow them to find the resources that they need. In the meantime, everybody have a blessed week. And you can always go to alzheimerspeaks.com for more information. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Suzanne Newman, host of the Answers for Elders podcast and radio show. 
We are the North Star that guides you through the complicated journey of senior care with trusted experts in money, law, living solutions, and more. So join us on this station, your favorite podcast channel, or just go to AnswersForElders.com. Meet the Wayshowers who will help your journey a lot easier.